Hello and welcome to episode 152 of the Chills with Will podcast. It's a pleasure today to be joined by Tommy Dean and a little bit about Tommy. Tommy Dean lives in Indiana with his wife and two children. He's the author of a flash fiction chapbook entitled Special Like the People on TV from Redbird Chapbooks. He is the editor at Fractured Lit. He has been previously published in The Bowl Magazine, The MacGuffin, The LaSalle Review, New World Writing, Pithead Chapel, and The New Flash Fiction Review. His story, You've Stopped, was chosen by Dan Chone? Chon? Chon? I just, I just saw on his Twitter that he tells us how to pronounce it. Dan Chon, to be included in Best Microfiction 2019. It will also be included in Best Small Fiction 2019. His interviews have been previously published in New Flash Fiction Review, The Rumpus, Craft Literary, and The Town Crier, or The Puritan. Find him at Tommy Dean Ryder, capital T, capital D, capital W, at Tommy Dean Ryder on Twitter. Tommy, how are you today? Thanks for joining me. I'm good, Peter. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. And I, I may have butchered that one, uh, the review, the the French name, L-A-S-C-A-U-S. Yeah, Lascau, I think, Lascau. only because they have a uh, um, a way to, to say it on their website as well. Otherwise, I wouldn't okay. have any idea either. <laughs> okay. Appreciate you saying me, and, and all apologies to the Lascau review. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> um, as I said, thanks so much. It's an on, uh, honor to have you. Looking forward to talking writing, and especially flash fiction. Um, I'd love to know about growing up and what you were what you were reading what you were writing if anything in those early days yeah that's a great question Uh, i could start off and tell you that i didn't actually start really writing until i was an undergrad so i'm not one of those like picked up a pen and wrote a whole bunch of stuff i think i had to write a story in second grade uh for a class and it was like a war between the canadians and the americans (laughs) but you know it was like all of like I don't know, six sentences or something. Uh But otherwise, yeah, I hadn't really wrote into undergrad. Um, But I've always been a huge, huge reader. Uh, We always had books around. We always went to garage sales to buy books. Mm -hmm. Um, So I started with a lot of like sports things at first because I was really into baseball and basketball. Thought, you know, like a lot of kids thought like that was where I was headed. So I wrote a ton of biographies like Hank Aaron, Cal Ripken, um, Mickey Mantle. And then I moved on to like some of those Christopher Pike uh, books, like I Know What You Did Last Summer kind of things. Like I was really into like that like YA horror-ish before YA was really a category, Um, which then, you know, eventually uh, my dad was reading Stephen King. And so I moved on to Stephen King, John Grisham, those really kind of heavy genre writers. Um, It wasn't until undergrad that I really started reading more literary work. Uh, Carver, Updike, um, Mm -hmm. there's this amazing story by Elizabeth Talent in the very first sudden fiction that really like even like in undergrad which was like in like 2004 2005 i was really struck by flash at that point mm-hmm. okay that makes a lot of sense um now did you read um, um the sports biographies i mean my brothers and i we get you know whatever the library limit was we get 12 of those or 10 of those we read, yeah probably read two while we were there and then you know so how about ron lafleur did you read about ron lafleur do you remember him no uh, i have i have and, not I remember he was the one he was uh, he played for the Tigers and he okay. had like the great redemption story. I think he'd got some in trouble and with and criminal activities as a kid. And then, you know, got past. I always remember though. But yeah, you know, Jackie Robinson, Mickey Mantle. Right. Like all yeah. Those great ones. Barry Larkin. I don't know. I remember reading about Barry Larkin. Yeah. Barry Larkin from, yeah, the Cincinnati Reds, I think. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, I love, and I wasn't I love like a progression. huge. Yeah. And I wasn't like a huge, like, Cubs fan is what a lot of people are. White Sox because uh-huh. we're. From Indiana, we're really close to uh, Chicago, yeah. um, but I wasn't, you know, like a super fan of them. So I was just anyone that I could get my hands on that I could uh, kind of learn about their life. And I hadn't really thought about it till now, but I think I was already thinking about character in some ways, mm. um, just because, you know, those were life stories and those were people overcoming obstacles to do, you know, this great thing that I was hoping to do. Right. Um, and I'm here today, you know, I'm not pitching 98 <laughs> mile an hour fastballs or anything um so it's a good thing that those books just kind of helped me you know move on to other more literary uh pursuits oh man characters right i mean i'll never forget um branch ricky you know of course he's always involved in the jackie robinson story one of his uh, this is probably like turn of the century or like 1904 when he remembers walking in on one of his players an african-american player like 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 saying like i wish i could take off my skin type of thing 
you know, because oh, of the wow. horrible, because of the horrible treatment, because, you know, yeah. of course they're living in a different hotel. I remember, I, I was thinking, I always remember Jackie Robinson, like in the book that I read about, like at the end of his life, you know, he was struggling with diabetes and there was like a tribute night to him. I, I remember those, like you said, just character. I mean, obviously great athletes and you remember those things, right? Just the, the character themselves. Yeah. But yeah, there was more than just what they could do on the field. Right. Yeah, sure. absolutely. This the story past the sport. Um, uh-huh. yeah, which I think I was probably pretty engaged in at that point, um, right. as I was, yeah, kind of an early reader, like who are these people as people? Exactly. Did you get in, were you a Sports Illustrated fan? Yeah, especially Sports Illustrated for kids. Yes. Um, like you said, went to the library, got <laughs> whatever we could get. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, I grew up in a town of like 600 and then the library was a town of mm-hmm. 1500. Um, so it was nice to be able to go and have access to all that kind of stuff that, you know, this is pre-internet, right. um, all those kind of things to read. And um, yeah, I just, if I wasn't playing the sport, then I wanted to live the sport, you know, in some other way. And so Sports Illustrated, especially Sports Illustrated for kids was really good for that. Yeah. So how, how about your athletic pursuits? Were you, you baseball was your main sport, it sounds like? Uh, basketball actually was my main all sport. Right. I played baseball until I, knew I, was I liked about, you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, a lot of a lot of uh, people probably wouldn't realize me as a basketball player now. You know, five nine and uh, not <laughs> obviously not very tall, and and it's hard to play anymore. But yeah, I love basketball. Spent hours and hours. Yes. One of those kids that you know we would shovel off the court just so we could play for like thirty or forty minutes on some winter day. Like I would never do that now. Like I hate going uh-huh. outside when it's cold, right? <laughs> yes. Um, but just that that pursuit of of something. Um, it's it, I think it's a good thing in a lot of ways like it kept you know it's out of trouble and all that kind of stuff and like i said it was pre-internet so right um so yeah uh, as soon as i couldn't hit a curveball i was done with baseball yeah uh, so about 15 i was like oh this is it that, that yes. there's a dream gone <laughs> yes. just kind of a weird thing to be such a young age and be like no it's over um, so and basketball lasted you know just a little bit longer and then it was over too you know yeah. five nine small hands <laughs> oh man so true yeah i I could hit any fastball. Give me any fastball, but yeah, curveball, off speed. I was just out. What do they say? Put your foot in the bucket, stepping in the bucket. Yeah, you know, just thrown yeah. off. Oh man, that's so true. And I mean, obviously, I, I, I'm, I'm forgetting here, of course, from the Hoosier State, right? I mean, this is the mecca of hoops. I mean, yeah. basketball yeah. Is, is religion there, no? It's basketball, yeah. And I grew up that way for sure. Um, just really, really interested. You know, headed down to the park when I was seven, and just. You know, kids obviously start a lot younger now than they used to, but yeah, at that point it was kind of a big deal. Um, you know, like nailing a hoop onto the um to a tree until uh, we got to the point where we could, you know, afford to get a hoop and get it cemented in. Yeah. Um so yeah, basketball all day, every day kind of thing. <laughs> um and so yeah, and you know, I compare it to writing sometimes too, because I used to shoot a lot of free throws, right? Like you're just throwing it up over and over and over again, hoping to get better. Um, and I try to bring that to the the desk when I can too. Like I'm just shooting free throws, like just putting sentences down um, to give myself to, self something to work with. Yes, nice. So we've been talking about writing the whole time. Oh, always, yeah. Team. Oh man, I love it. Redirect, re- but it's not really even a redirect. That's awesome. Um, so you know, we're throwing up those free throws exactly. When um, what about like the genre of of shorts or you know. Short shorts. I don't know how outdated that term is, and flash fiction. Like, yeah, how did you yeah. Get I think into that. That's a good question. Um, so like I said, I was in undergrad in two thousand and four, and we got. Uh, I just decided to take a creative writing class on a whim. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd always been a reader, and I never really thought like, oh, I could do what they're doing for me or my brain, right? Like they'd set it on fire with all these mm-hmm. stories and narratives and all that kind of stuff. And then I was just like, you know what? Let's take a chance. Let's take a creative writing class. And uh, I just fell in love with it. Um, of course, you know, we wrote longer stories, but I wasn't as good at maintaining the longer stories. Um, I like to focus on like a one scene in a character's life. Like that's all they get. And if that's all they get, like what can I get out of it kind of thing? Yeah. And even when I first started writing, I think that I had gravitated towards those kind of moments, which is, you know, more of what Flash does. Not that it can't use summary or longer time frames, but... Sure. I just worked really well in shorter time frames on the page. So I did write some, some really bad, you know, long fiction, which everyone does, you know, yeah. they've kind of debunked that 10,000 10, hour thing, but you do really had to put a lot of hours into writing until you realize that, you know, 
to write all your cliches out in a lot of ways like mm. just to kind of experience writing stuff that somebody else has already written but you don't know it because you haven't written enough uh right. yet to know that um so that was a long-winded thing for yeah. your question but we did get that first sudden fiction book as a text uh, i think it's from 86 i was reading yeah. it in 2004 um, there was some really good stuff in there there's some stuff that feels like what short shorts were which was really just like a short story written short uh, where i think flash in a lot of ways is its own kind of genre i think it does kind of propagate its own kind of rules in some ways that it's not always just a short story in miniature um okay. which we can get into yeah. uh as we as we go along so really i think i started writing them in 2004 2005 i graduated in 2006 from undergrad I applied to MFA programs. My work was not good enough. I didn't get in. Completely fair. The longer stories were not good. I get it. Um, so then I just kept working on short stuff from there, really. Um, you know, I throw in some longer works, but my brain just works in, you know, a flash of a scene in a lot of ways. Um, and I can't tell you why. It's just <laughs> the way that that I see images or hear a voice, and then I just kind of take off and... Um, hope to finish in a thousand words or less hmm. wow um so you, you know you talk about like the the debunking of the ten thousand hour rule and all that like but how did you how did you get the time or where did you get the time in in honing your craft i mean were you did you do grad school did you have time to write were you like you know eight i to eventually five yeah guard with free time and like no. to, you know <laughs> yeah kind of in some way it's like when i um i had a degree in uh, criminology and creative writing um okay. a lot of people were like oh you're gonna write crime books and like i just wasn't drawn to that at the point yeah um but it did work as like a social services kind of degree so i went and i was like a case manager and i was working with kids um that were dealing with you know mental health issues at first and then people with developmental disabilities and so i could set my own schedule mm. um and i was kind of working around their schedules with you know meeting with uh the, the clients and those kind of things to make sure that they were getting the support that they needed but it left a lot of room like oh every once in a while like i'd show up early so i'd be scribbling in the car um or like oh i have you know an hour and a half at home that i wouldn't normally have with a different kind of job so in the early days that's what i was doing uh eventually <laughs> after i got my mfa uh which was a low residency program so i was doing it all at home anyway uh, I eventually went and got my license to be a special education teacher for middle school. Mm -hmm. And so then I was just really fitting any of my writing in from this block of like 3.30 to 4.30 when I was home, but my kids and my wife weren't home yet because they were right. at school. So it was just that one hour mm -hmm. or I'd have like an hour in the morning. I get up before other people, not like crazy. Like some people get up at five in the morning and sure. it's amazing that they can do that. I would just try to wheedle in an hour here, mm -hmm. wheedle in an hour there. And that's yeah. another reason I think that I'm drawn to flash. It's like, I have the opportunity to finish a story hmm. in 30 minutes or an hour, or at least a draft, right? Like, right. you know, obviously those need to go back and be revised, but you have the potential instead of like a short story could take weeks or months. Or I know that um, Lauren Groff once said that like, she'd write, you know, most of the story, but would have to wait a year or two to get the ending for something right. to just strike her. And I, and I feel that way too. Now, if I write anything longer, I'm almost always waiting for the ending to come. And so it can take months or years where Flash, like, honestly, at this point, like I can write a halfway decent draft in 30 minutes if everything's clicking, you know, in sure. that writing session. So wow. I think it's another reason I was drawn to Flash is just because I did have those very short windows to write. Yeah. In. Well, yeah. So how, how would you differentiate Flash from short, short? I mean, short, short, I think is, is an old fashioned term maybe. Yeah, in some ways, I think, it's, I think some writers still want to use short, short. Mm -hmm. uh, some writers hate the word flash, and I get that, um, mm -hmm. but it's just kind of what it's become, mm -hmm. uh, for better or worse. Like, it is an identifier, and I do think that we knew, sometimes need those labels uh, to kind of help us under identify, like, what they are. So lit mags are obviously learn, looking for word counts, mm -hmm. and so labels like flash or short, short help. I do think that a short, short wants to be a short story. Um, it, it using things as short stories would use that Flash doesn't necessarily use, which would be internal thought from the character. It's really mm -hmm. hard to do that in Flash, uh, especially if you're trying to be really urgent and have a sense of velocity, which I think Flash needs. Short, short, acting as short stories can still kind of linger. 
and still kind of take a little while to get going where I think Flash takes off like a rocket in a lot of ways from that Mm -hmm. opening line or opening paragraph. I feel like Flash almost always starts this like in the middle of the story. Like we're not waiting for the inciting incident where a short story is like, oh, I'm going to go and take the first paragraph and build to this inciting incident, which is much similar to a novel, right? Where like Mm -hmm. you get to show like the character was having a good life until this happened. Where Flash is like, oh my gosh, the building is already burning down. How are we going to get out? Yeah. Um, and I think that short shorts also take the convention of like that Freytag pyramid in a lot of ways. Like it does have a beginning, middle, end, an exciting incident, okay. uh, rising action, falling action. Where Flash, I think our job sometimes is to like, what can we cut? Can we cut the rising action? Ooh, do we really need the falling action here? Do we? Did we get the punch of the climax, and then we can just kind of end it and let the reader kind of imagine what happens in the white space after the ending and i think that that's what flash does when it's doing well i think it is able to skip certain elements um by putting more emphasis on other elements um flash doesn't really use a lot of dialogue very often either um but when it does like that dialogue has to be like the best line that these characters would ever say in those kind of moments Mm -hmm. uh whereas short stories i think get away with a little less um punchy dialogue in some ways you know what i mean like you're yeah. you're gonna linger in a in a 30 page story you don't get to linger in 500 words um so i think that's some of the main differences if that mm-hmm. makes sense it does it does um you you for sure have some dynamic first lines that's that's for sure oh thank that, you that makes a lot of sense yeah we'll highlight those in a little bit um i love for you to, to talk about some of the i guess formative i mean maybe there's so many that it's too many to list but some of the formative short shorts or flash pieces or, you know, punchy pieces that you really just, you know, maybe even teach or. Oh, uh, sure. But that are just like classics of the forms. Yeah. That's a great question. Now I'm like on the spot to call <laughs> up names of things. Um, I mean, I can talk about writers or literary journals for sure uh-huh. that like are, I definitely go to like uh, smoke long in a lot of ways is the oldest and longest running flash magazine i think vestal review kind of claims that as well but okay. uh, and, and they're a great magazine as well i've been published by them i have not been published by smoke long it is a <laughs> dream and a goal um just because so many great writers have, have published there and and i started reading stories there by dan sean Stuart mm-hmm. dieback uh kathy fish meg pocraft um these people that uh are kind of like the I don't know, say king and queens because like the royalty thing is kind of a weird right. metaphor but like they are the, the stalwart writers of what i would consider flash more than short short mm. um even Stuart dieback in some ways like it's always a question of like is it flash is it not and and i i interviewed him once uh and and he was very fluid with what he would consider the labels he's not concerned with it at all his writing is great no matter what you call it right Right, exactly yeah it doesn't matter yeah i don't want to think that i'm disparaging because you're right it doesn't matter it's it's Mm. fantastic it's musical it's beautiful you just sometimes like what would i label it i don't know i don't know that it matters Mm. um but sometimes it does matter i'm trying to think of specific stories i did mention that elizabeth talent story it's called uh no one's a mystery um Mm. And it's just really good. It, it, unfortunately, it's about a guy that's having an affair with a younger girl, and he gives her like a diary as a as a birthday gift, and like it just shows like the counterpointing uh, between their their ages and their maturity. Um, and they're in a car, and he kind of makes her get under the 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 wheel well while his wife passes him, and she thinks that she completely like understands what's happening, and she doesn't. But we as the reader kind of do. And so it just kind of lets you in on a little secret of the story. And so like that just, um, yeah, it's just really good. Uh, there's a story by Carver called Popular Mechanics, uh, which is a little okay. frightening, but it's about the the two couple, the the couple that's fighting over the baby. Um, and there at the end, we have this like Solomon uh, thing that he had where the, the women were going to pull on the baby and the one says, no, no, no. Um, I don't want to give away that story, but that's pretty classic um, mm-hmm. short, short flash kind of uh material there um there's so many so many writers that yeah. i could name or list or stories i'm sorry i wasn't quite prepared for no, that no, question no no, no. That no, no, no. I, I understand when i ask that question it's like there's so many that you it freezes you because it's like uh, 
you know and i'm sure yeah we're done you'll remember 30 of them you know? i'll remember yeah like i yeah but i do yeah i would admit like maybe carl has a story called pine um i think it's in flashback fiction um it's a it's about a, a slave uh and from his point of view uh and what he's trying to do to protect his family and it's just so well written um and it just it just breaks me every time um yeah uh sarah fraley has some amazing Maisie Micros and Flash, Sprinting Wit. Um, I could go on and on. Um, and so many of them are are, are women writers too, which I lo- absolutely mm. love. It's amazing. Um, mm. They just take me to places um, that's fresh and resonant and just stirs stirs my soul, I guess. Right, right. Is that a Beyonce line? Are you still, no. Uh, I don't know, maybe. I mean, I think that's what, what Flash should do, though, in a lot of ways, like sometimes you get to the end of a short story and you're like, "Oh, kind of, what did I read?" Yeah. I generally don't get that feeling when I'm reading Flash. Like, mm. it, there's something that's working on me emotionally. Right. Um, I mean, Flash is a thing that you can read fast, but it should have a lot of depth. And when it does, right? Like, yeah, it huh. stirs stirs your soul. <laughs> I appreciate. <that. laughs> I appreciate those. That um, so I, I mean, basically, you know, definitely from what you said, I think that it probably wouldn't qualify i mean the whole my whole podcast is based on is based off a a lot of the ethic and a lot of it's based on a line from tobias wolf from bullet in the brain oh i love that story right yeah it's amazing uh it's not quite flash right i think it's five pages it is so it's like what 1400 words instead it's like one of those tweeners which are really Uh hard to publish now yes okay um but the the ending of that story, the Ooh. the truth that he pulls off uh, with the bullet as he's just kind of you know everything's flashing right like mm-hmm. that's like flash in a lot right. of ways right 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 um, is just amazing and every time I read it or hear it read um, when we get to that like and the character's great anyway right like with his mouthy uh-huh. mouth to these yes. people is is amazing anyway and the dramatic irony of like oh god please shut up please shut up oh you're not going to mm-hmm. something bad's going to happen. Um, but then like lots of writers just would have went to a blank screen after the bullet, but like Tobias Wolf was like, no, 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 there's so much more we need to know in this moment and I'm going to bend it. And he just does and goes for it. Yeah. It's amazing. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Great description. Like you said, yeah. A lot of, you know, David Chase from the Sopranos, he would have gone the black screen. Right. Right. (laughs) No, I love the Sopranos, but, um, but no, the, so there's part of it, you know, like you said, so it's, it's, he, he, the narrator is talking about um, those things he remembers, but more importantly, those things he won't remember. Right. Right. All the all the things that don't matter in the end. And one of them, you know, just being that he was so jaded and so cynical by the end and right and all that. And um, but there's a line about how he would have these lines that would provide thrills at will. You yeah. Know, he, he could quote, I think, Aeschylus. I think you pronounce it Aeschylus in, in the, in the right. Greek, you know. And that's where yeah. I get the chills at will from this idea of, you know, those lines like they is, they is, they is at the end of the story that just reverberate in the head, you know? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I, yeah, that's a great way to, to frame your podcast. I, and I, I think that's what Flash does as well. Like, for me, like, every line is important. Uh, every word is important because you only get so many words anyway. Um, and, but then you have this potential to just load these metaphors and load these lines. Totally. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, I think of uh, like Hemingway, his um, his when you know, they've put together his short stories in different ways. But one of the collected short stories I have and I'm a huge fan of Hemingway's short stories, I, way more than his novels. Mm-hmm. Um, but the um, I don't know what you call them. They're like little interludes. Um, yeah, the right? ones that are. Uh, in Nick of Time, or whatever the Nick stories are, or whatever. Yeah, yeah the, the, the little... collection I have is, has all the different has the different collections together. So I'm not sure exactly even which ones. Are okay, from, but that makes sense. It'd sure. be from the Nick Adams stories. Yeah, but like there's one of them with it's I don't know, eighty words or 120 words right. or some, but it's like like it's so resonant and it's um it's about basically like the soldier I think in World War One, and he's in the trenches and he's you know praying please God please God please God help me. If you help me, I'll do whatever you want me to do. He gets out. Everything's okay. And then the last line is something like, he never did, you know. Right. He never did make it up to God. He never did, you know. And he never did. He forgot about it. I'm just like, oh, man. And we just needed a glimpse of that character's life to know everything that we needed to know about them. 
from yeah. that moment. Uh, and that's yeah. what I think of when I'm writing Flash is I have this character, I have this line or this situation, like mm -hmm. this is all they get from me. I, I rarely go back to a character. So like, what are we going to learn or what's going to be revealed about this character um, that we would only get from this, this moment, this event. Right. Um, and I think he did do, yeah, he did some amazing stuff with a, a very short amount of words. I think that Flash, the Flash really relies on the reader as well. Like you're almost working together because they, they need to make the inferences because you don't want to tell them mm -hmm. everything because then they're taking out of the story and, and you don't have enough time to build, build, I think we froze up there. Can you hear me? About inferences and how, and how, um, yeah, Flash really works with the reader um, because you have such a short space. You can't really tell them things. You need them to kind of mm -hmm. work with you. Uh, to kind of figure things out, to make inferences and judgment. Um, whereas short stories, like they do that as well, but there are also parts where they clearly go inside the character's head and right. clearly tell you the feelings that they're having. And it's a lot harder to do that with um, flash fiction, um, mm. just because it's not what the, the genre necessarily demands. Right. That makes sense. The um, It's so short I can even read it from, from Hemingway. It's, quote, Dear Jesus, please get me out. Christ, please, 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 Christ. If you only keep me from getting killed, I'll do anything you say. I believe I believe in you, and I'll tell everybody in the world that you are the only thing that matters. Please, please, dear Jesus. The shelling moved farther up the line. We went to work on the trench, and in the morning the sun came up, and the day was hot and muggy and cheerful and quiet. The next night, back at Mestre, he did not tell the girl he went upstairs with at the Via Rosa about Jesus, and he never told anybody. Whew. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. We we know everything we need to know about this guy we know based everything on we need to know. his actions on the, the kind of prayer thing and then his actions or inaction in this regard. Exactly. Um, is, is great. I love when characters are faced with the opportunity to change and they mm -hmm. don't. Um, it really can create a lot of resonance in a lot of ways uh, right. because we get to see what they could have done in a lot of ways. The could have, right? The, the, yeah. That that space in between what might have been and what is, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's where Definitely. that's where literature lies. Yeah. Yes. The um, I love. I always I've tried to do it like this. I love how he how good he is with and where someone else might use commas. He yeah. says the day was hot and muggy and cheerful and quiet. Yeah, uh, I find myself wanting to do that quite a bit as well. Right. Like I don't want to break. I want to put it in the same sentence because it's a feeling that you're having all at once. It's a mm. simultaneous and writing doesn't do simultaneous, right? It, sure. it, it can't, uh, it's a very linear straight thing. Um, so he kind of uses that and to make you feel all those things kind of at once. Um, right. I even like to start sentences with and every once in a while too, uh, just to kind of get the feeling of like, Oh, you thought we left the thought back there, but mm -hmm. we didn't. We're kind of continuing it, but we did have a pause. Um, just kind of a geeky, grammar kind of thing to do i guess all the uh first grade third grade teachers are saying do not start a sentence with and right not and not but yeah but i yes. love stories that start with a path in the white space that we don't necessarily get um no doubt. i love using the word before or after in an opening as well it gives this gravitas or weight to the things that we don't know like this has mm -hmm. been ongoing um yeah, which i think can part. be a really cool yeah no doubt. I'm so I'm so uh, disappointed in myself that I actually misquoted it. This this is a line from from uh, Bull in the Brain. Well, first of all, the paragraph where the chills at well line comes from, it's uh the the line is it is worth noting what Anders that's the 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 protagonist. It is worth noting what Anders did not remember, given what he did remember. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And farther down, it's uh he did not remember a single line of the hundreds of poems he had committed to memory in his youth, so that he could give himself the shivers at will. Not silent upon a peak in Darien, or my God, I heard this day, or all my pretty ones. So it's shivers yeah. at will. 
is exactly yeah right. i love that he includes just that little bit of the the poetry too like even if we don't know the poetry right like we're we're feeling like the, the things that are lost here the narrator is allowing us to see like yeah what is being lost no doubt about it i i mean you talk about like the the understatement and the lines that you know that don't tell us a lot and we fill in those gaps and there's a lot of context obviously for this one but i always think of the line from um from Elie Wiesel's Night, you know, of course, the Holocaust memoir, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, and he he just he he just witnessed, I mean, absolute hell on earth. He'd witnessed people killing each other over a crust of bread, right? You know that people were throwing at them like they were animals, and you know he describes all of this and and this son, you know, accidentally or you know killing his own father, going after this bread, and then the, simply the line is even as his own paragraph, it's I was I was sixteen. Yeah. Boom. Right. Yeah. You it know, just which, puts into context how right. horrific. Right. Uh, that is it. It puts it in context for the reader too, who is probably for the first time reading it fairly young. I would imagine mm -hmm. too. I read it first when I was in sixth grade. Yeah. Um. So it does seem to be used, uh, in some ways from that, you know, just at the beginning of middle school or junior high kind of thing to be like, you know, the the world is is not unfortunately as safe as maybe we've tried to portray it. Sure. And it's time for us or for the, the kid that's reading it or any of that kind of stuff to realize that there are things that we need to be careful of and be on a lookout for, or history will repeat itself and we don't want that to happen. I mean, that's one of, I mean, literature is the shield against that, right? Yes. Yes. No doubt about it. I, I love the way you put that for sure. Um, you're, you're a teacher, you're an editor, yeah. So I, like I said, I was a middle school special education teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm now uh, an editor full time for Fractured Lit and Uncharted Magazine. Um, and then I do some independent uh, teaching of flash fiction writing, uh, right. some asynchronous classes, some Zoom classes, however I can connect with other uh, writers of flash. Yeah. Um, and so that's, yeah, I work from home and I do both of those things and I, and I edit as well. Um, and, and and I write and try to publish. Um, so I'm, you know, have it, that hasn't changed. Still getting lots of rejections and still trying to write new stories. Um, but then also, yeah, an editor and teacher as well. That's awesome. 